My name is Tomic McPherson. The story I'm about to tell you may seem incredible, but please, I need you to believe me, because I'm sure I won't survive tonight. It all started a few hours ago. My family and I were celebrating Thanksgiving, so we were all together, which is very rare in my family. Today, my aunt and uncle and my little cousin had come. It was also his birthday. They made such a long trip to get here. They don't deserve... Okay. Okay, keep it together, Tommy. You can do it. Just tell the story before it's too late. Even though it's been a few hours, all my memories are very blurry. It's like those bastards are doing something to confuse me, but if I try really hard, the memories come back. Although it's getting harder and harder. I'll do my best to tell you what happened. As I was saying, we were all gathered around the table. We had already eaten the turkey and now we were making jokes with my mom. We were telling her that she was taking too long to bring the cake for Jimmy, my cousin. She just laughed with the characteristic smile she had. It was as if her good humor was contagious throughout the whole house. She brought the cake, we turned off the lights and sang happy birthday to my cousin. But when we tried to turn them on, the first strange event happened. The lights just wouldn't turn on. My dad went to turn on the kitchen lights, but to no avail. My whole family was confused when suddenly the second event occurred. What the hell was that? It's just the cow, Bill. Relax. No, no. Bill's right. A cow doesn't make that noise unless something's happening to it. Do you think we should go check it out? Yeah, I'll get my shotgun. Oh no, we are a family at dinner. Don't do this. Gloria, I assure you I'll be back as soon as possible. We're just gonna check it out. Tommy, you coming with us? Me? Yeah, you. You're a man now. Come and help us see what's going on. Of course, Dad. The three of us walked to the barn at the back of the house. The path was short, but the darkness was absolute. It was as if a black void had swallowed everything outside our houses. When we arrived, a light source blinded us, and when my eyes cleared, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. My dad covered my mouth, knowing that I was going to scream, but by his trembling hand, I knew that he was terrified too. That light was some kind of ship, and from it, two small beings were carrying a dead cow with some strange machinery. Oh, shit. Are those aliens? Shut it, Bill. They'll hear us. Oh, my God. Are they watching us? I turned my face back to the figures, and just as my uncle had said, the two faces were looking in our direction. At this, we ran desperately to the house. I heard some shots from the shotgun behind us, but I could think of nothing else but to cry. What had we seen? We arrived at the house, which was now full of candles, and my uncle, in desperation, began to tell us everything that had happened to our family, who were incredulous. Suddenly, my mother said some words that froze us all with shock. Where is my husband? My father was not in the house. What? Tommy, you saw him come in with us, didn't you? No, no, he was behind us. I think he kept shooting while we were running. Where is my husband? Without any of us being able to answer her, without me at least being able to react to my father's disappearance, my aunt let go of my little cousin and jumped at me, choking me with enormous force. My uncle and my mother jumped toward her and managed to free me. My aunt just stood there, staring blankly and her eyes dilated wide open. Her nose began to leak blood, and without a single word, she walked to the door and left. Mom? Mom! Where are you going? Oh, no, no, no. What are you doing? You're leaving us here alone? I'm sorry, Gloria. Please take care of my son. I'll go get her and I'll be back as soon as possible. Without letting my mother answer, he just left. Mom, I'm afraid he won't come back. Help me cover all the windows and doors. Don't cover the front door. Someone might come back, so just lock it. Yes, I started to cover all the windows with furniture. But while I was closing the kitchen door, I heard a knock on a dining room window. I approached slowly. My cousin was there too, but he didn't dare to see what it was. That window wasn't covered yet, but it was closed. That's why I left it for last. I stood next to the curtain, took courage, and opened it. 
My uncle was standing in front of the window, banging his head against the window with a blank stare. Ah! Dad! What's wrong? Where's that coming from? From the ceiling! Someone's trying to get in through the top! Mom, we have to hide! Mom? Son, you go hide. I feel a little dizzy. Aunt? What's the matter? You're white! Oh, you're smaller, Tommy. Did you do your homework at school? Aunt, it's Jimmy! Tommy's there! My mom was out of her mind, totally lost. The footsteps were getting closer and closer. I ran to the bathroom, and on the way in, I grabbed this camera and locked myself in. Ah! Jimmy! No! How could I have forgotten about him? I'm so dizzy. Why is it so hard for me to think? Those beings that invaded the house stood behind the bathroom door, and I saw how the handle began to open and close. If I hadn't locked the door, they would have already entered. They insisted a little more without much effort, and simply left. It's been a little over an hour since all this happened. I'm still locked in the bathroom. I know they're there. I hear the footsteps coming and going. I'm getting dizzier and dizzier. At times, I, I forget where I am and what I'm doing here. If anyone sees this footage, please look us up. My name is Tommy McPherson. I don't want to die. I'm so scared. Suddenly, I'm, I'm thirsty. Too thirsty. I need something to drink. Maybe if I pour myself a glass of water in the kitchen. Yes, that's it. Just a glass of water, and I'll be back. Hey guys, thanks so much for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. Last Thanksgiving, Nina asked me to have dinner with her family at their ranch house. I was pretty serious about her, so I said why not. We set out on this beautiful mountain road surrounded by the vast landscape and deep woods. While adjusting her prosthetic ear, Nina said that her parents and grandpa were dying to meet me. After driving for almost three hours, we took a turn into this narrow, dusty road and stopped in front of a beautiful house. The house had this domestic architectural style which looked pretty new to me. I honked the car horn and a man in his late fifties came out with a walking stick in his hand. He was limping slightly on the left foot. Our eyes met and he gave me a cold stare for noticing his walk. Nina ran to hug him. Hi, Dad. I missed you. He hugged her back and then said to me, You must be Justin. Yes, sir. Thanks for inviting me. Call me Arnold. Saying this, he let out a creepy grin and took us inside the house. The house was huge and filled with antiques. There was a high back red chair near the fireplace, and an old man wearing black sunglasses was sitting on it. Upon entering, he greeted us, saying, There's our Barbie and her Ken doll, I guess. Oh, stop it, Grandpa. Nina blushed, but I walked up to him and shook his hand. At first, I thought he was blind, but he gave me a tight handshake and then moved his head up and down like he was checking me out from head to toe. Don't worry, I'm not blind. My vision has become sensitive to light, hence the doctor prescribed me to use these glasses. Oh, I see. Well, it's nice to meet you, Grandpa. You are a handsome man. I hope you'll enjoy your stay with us. Of course you will, Grandpa. Once Nina's Grandpa let go of my hand, I moved away from him. Welcome to our ranch, Justin. I quickly turned around, hearing a creepy female voice right behind me. And there she was, Mrs. Miles, Nina's mother. She was a strikingly beautiful woman and probably the only one in the family with no physical defect. 
She wore brown trousers with a tight red blouse, paired with hunting boots. She even had these latex gloves, which made her look pretty elite. My eyes didn't fail to notice the huge diamond ring on her index finger. Um, thanks for having me, Mrs. Miles. <laughs> we have plenty of food, Justin. No one is having you. Everyone started laughing at her weird joke, and I too made an awkward chuckle. <laughs> uh, that was funny. I have prepared the upstairs guest bedroom for you. Nina will be sleeping with us tonight. Don't mind, we are a little orthodox. In our family, we do Thanksgiving differently. Oh, no, it's absolutely fine, Mrs. Miles. Nina took me to the bedroom upstairs, and once we got alone, she locked her arms around my neck and said, So, did you like everyone? Yeah, everyone's nice. Wait till you eat dinner. My mom makes insane Thanksgiving food. Can't wait. She kissed me and went to freshen up. I locked the door and lit up a smoke. Even though I told Nina everything felt fine, in reality, it didn't. I couldn't shake off the fact of how weird her entire family was. The way her limping father stared at me, her grandpa's sturdy handshake, and her mom's weird joke. The call for dinner came and we sat around this big dining table filled with mashed potatoes, fried chicken, a big roasted turkey, cheesecake, and chocolate donuts. Man, Nina was right. Her mother did know how to cook for Thanksgiving. We all raised our glasses filled with wine when I noticed a big pot boiling on the stove behind us. Mrs. Miles got up saying, Oh, I almost forgot the soup. She brought the pot using her kitchen mittens and placed it right in the middle of the table. Once she opened the lid, a delicious aroma of meat and vegetables filled the entire room. I was almost drooling to taste it. I grabbed the spoon and was about to pour some soup into my bowl when Nina's grandpa slapped hard on my hand, screaming, This isn't for you! Sorry, sorry. I looked at Nina with a confused face and saw her getting awkward. Her father, Arnold, gave me another death stare and said, That's only for us. You can have everything else. Uh, don't mind, Justin. The soup is kind of our family tradition. We only make it on Thanksgiving, with our decade-old special ingredients. And only our family members are allowed to eat it. This traditional recipe is our way of thanking each other and being grateful to one another. But don't worry, if everything goes fine between you and Nina, you will get to taste it after your wedding. <laughs> Mom, stop it. I smiled in embarrassment and said, I'm sorry, Mrs. Miles. I didn't mean to offend you all. It's fine. I should have told you earlier. Let's eat now. After a quite fulfilling dinner with Nina and her weird family, I went to bed. The entire night, I kept thinking about the delicious smell of that soup. I dozed off and the grandfather clock woke me up at around 3 a.m., Feeling thirsty, I went downstairs. Everyone was dead asleep, so I tiptoed to the kitchen. The soup pot was still in the kitchen oven. I grabbed a ladle to sneak a little taste. In search of a big piece of meat, I churned the ladle into the soup and almost got a heart attack. One by one, things floated to the surface. An eyeball, a small ear, a big toe, and a female ring finger. I screamed and fell on the floor, realizing the horror. This family has been cooking each other body parts in the name of a traditional Thanksgiving soup. Seems like you couldn't resist the Miles family Thanksgiving soup either. <laughs> there you go. Daisy, I told you the boy would be one of us one day. Enough, guys. Stop teasing the love of my life. We have another special ingredient to add to our soup now. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs> Four of them surrounded me with hungry eyes. Even my sweet, innocent girlfriend, Nina, stood there holding a sharp knife in her hand. She grinned like a psycho and said, Mom, why don't you take off your gloves now? I mean, Justin can already guess. Mrs. Miles took off her glove and I saw her ring finger was cut off. Nina's grandpa took off his glasses and I found out he only had one eye. And Mr. Miles was standing barefoot for the first time. I understood that it was his big toe that I saw in that soup. Are you all crazy? 
No, we just love our family. And this is how we feel the oneness, by tasting each other's flesh and blood. Every year, my mom boils this soup, and as the toppings drop our donated body parts. We obviously can't overcook them, you know. It's our secret preserved ingredient. After we get done with the soup, she preserves those body parts again in a jar until the next Thanksgiving. Oh my god! Come on, you don't have to be scared. It's only a one-time thing. So, what are you going to donate? Take out his eye! We already have one! Ooh, how about this nose? Mom, Justin is our guest. Shouldn't we let him choose? Tears rolled down my eyes. I knew I was trapped. I knew that there was no escape for me now. Nina sat down beside me and kissed me on the cheek. It's just one time. Please, I don't want to lose you. Just do it for me, love. This one time only. I closed my eyes and nodded my head. Nina and I got married last year. The photographs only looked beautiful after I put on my prosthetic nose. The wounds have healed. It doesn't hurt anymore. I'm happy it was a one-time thing. And this Thanksgiving, I'll get to taste the traditional Miles soup, being one of them. Say his name and he comes again. He will punish the bad children. Hear his footsteps on the snowy night. He is Krampus. He is fright. My sister was reciting this poem again and again. I got so irritated after a point that I threw the TV remote aiming at her head, screaming. Stop it! Ow! You hurt me, Andrew. And stop singing that creepy rhyme! Why? Are you scared? You know, Krampus will come for you. You hitting me for no reason makes you a bad kid this Christmas. The moment Susie said it, our living room light flickered. My face turned pale. He gave an eerie smile and whispered, Told you, he's coming. Shut up! I screamed and went to my room. The windows near my bed opened towards the deep woods. We lived in this small house on the outskirts. Our parents are farmers, and they were at the stable feeding our horses. So it was only me and my sister in the house. The stable is right behind but I still feared that if Krampus comes for me, my mom might not be able to hear my scream. That's when I heard a glass break. Susie? I called out to her, but no reply came. I came out of my room and found Susie lying on the floor. Susie? Why are you lying on the floor? As I went closer to check on her, I discovered a horrific scene. Someone had snatched Susie's eyes. Her eye sockets were hollow. Ah! A low growl took place right behind me. Turning around, I saw the most terrifying creature. His skin was a pale, icy-looking blue. His beard was like Santa's, except it was black and came to a point. His nose was long, and his face looked grizzled, but more human than I thought. His horns looked like they'd touch the ceiling if he jumped. His body looked human in shape, but the animal in appearance. His legs were twisted and ended in hooves, like that of a cow or a bull. He had a long tail, his torso was contorted, and everything but his face and palms were covered in fur. He had broken chains around his wrists and what looked like a heavy red Christmas ornament attached to his tail by another chain. His ears were pointed and so were his yellow teeth. Despite his horrid outlandish appearance, the most noticeable thing about the creature were the bells that it wore and the basket on its back that had a partial arm of a child peeking from it. The stories were true and so is Krampus. What? What happened to Susie? <laughs> I punished her for searing you. But but she wasn't a bad kid. I, I was. She said, you'll come for me. <laughs> She's mistaken the rules. Didn't she try to scare you in the first place? Yeah, she did, but... Krampus didn't wait for my answer and started heading towards the main door. 
With his every step, I could feel our house tremble as if an earthquake had arrived. I tried to scream with all my might, but no sound would escape my mouth as I finally was able to choke out. Mom! Dad! Krampus turned back at me again. There's no point in trying to save them. I'm gonna punish them next. Please, don't... don't do this to my family. You call them family? Did you forget the time your drunk dad burned your hand with a cigarette? Tears rolled down my eyes. Even though he was right, I still wanted my family, no matter how cruel and mean they were to me. Adopted kids do not always get the childhood they want. I haven't, but I don't want to be alone again. You need to stop saving me every time. Please, for once, let me have a family. But they never treat you right. Family is supposed to love you. Stop asking Santa for a fake family. He keeps granting your wishes, and I am the one who has to take care of the consequences afterwards. You are no ordinary kid. You don't need a family. But I want a normal life. Krampus whipped his chain on the floor in anger, screaming, Move out of my way! The times were repeating themselves. I followed Krampus as he stormed towards the farmhouse. I begged, but he didn't stop, just like the last time. He went inside the horse stable and slammed the wooden doors behind him, locking me outside. What happened next was no more a shock to me. I began hearing Krampus growl, followed by the rattling of his metal whip, and the screams of my mom and dad echoed in the valley. Susie's poem kept repeating in my mind. Say his name and he comes again. He will punish the bad children. Hear his footsteps on the snowy night. He is Krampus. He is fright. Sister Darlin asked me to step outside the office for a moment as she had something private to discuss with Mr. and Mrs. Harlow. Even though I walked out, I still stood by the door to overhear their conversation. Andrew is a very good kid, but he had been through a lot. The two previous families were abusive towards him. We found bruises and burnt wounds on his body that his previous adoptive parents caused him. But what is even more terrifying is their deaths. Their deaths? What are you saying? Both the families died before Thanksgiving at the hand of some psycho killer. At least, that's what the cops are saying. If you want to provide him with a home, I suggest you take good care of that kid. Like I said, he has been through a lot. It must have been awful to be abused by people who promised to take care of him and then witness their deaths. Did he ever talk about the killer? Or at least what happened on those nights? No. In both cases, the cops found him unconscious in his room. The investigation is still ongoing, so I want you to take special care of him. Of course we will, Sister Darlin. We will give Andrew the life he deserves. Don't worry, he will have the best Thanksgiving of his life with us this time. 